Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Let's talk about the Los Angeles Clippers. Let's talk about the spin, the PR campaign, the possible misinformation that's been bandied about. Certainly, the widespread misperception. Understand, there has been no ruling, there has been no determination at any time that the NBA's constitution and bylaws allows the league to order an owner to divest himself or herself of their ownership interests based on private pillow talk. I know that the NBA commissioner came out during the playoffs and said that he would push to have Donald Sterling sell his team. But let's be clear here. That hasn't been voted upon by the full league. The league has not issued an order for Donald Sterling to sell his team. It hasn't. And so let's get real for a second. If you've invested hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars into your NBA franchise, are you really going to support any attempt to legalize the right for the league to order you to sell your team, your hundred plus million dollar investment? based on private conversations that you've had with your mistress. I don't believe that would ever happen. We're hearing Mark Cuban talk about how all of us, in his opinion, harbor some non-PC beliefs, right? I don't believe businessmen would put themselves at risk of having any third party having the right to order them to sell their interest in their franchise based on private conversations with their mistress, right? I just don't see that happening. So, what the NBA has done is they've gotten the benefit of the public announcement made by their new commissioner that the league's unhappy with Donald Sterling and the league was going to vote on Sterling selling his interest in the team. Right? They've gotten the public bang for that. But keep in mind, nothing else happened there. The league scheduled a meeting to have the vote. Donald Sterling wisely allowed his wife, who already owned half the team, regardless of what Donald Sterling did, right? Let's get real. If the two of them filed for divorce, the team would be under the jurisdiction of the California judicial system. I'm here telling you as a lawyer here in California that California is a community property state. Right? It's community property. Right? There is no way the state of California was going to allow some group of owners who have never penalized an owner for the private statements of their spouse, right? How many NBA owners in league history have been ordered to sell their team because their spouse was having an affair and made statements to their lover in private that were leaked to the public on a website like TMZ that led to public outcry? right it just hasn't happened understand the owner of the Clippers was never Donald Sterling by himself it was always Donald Sterling and Shelley Sterling she always had a portion of the Clippers right now that the Clippers are on the verge of being sold for two billion dollars understand her interest in the Clippers was according to current market valuations a one billion dollar interest Right? Given that she did nothing. Now, I understand. There are allegations from 
lawsuits way back when. But that's not what's at issue here, right? Because the NBA didn't order Shelly Sterling to divest her interest based on allegations made in prior discrimination suits. Rather, what the NBA had publicly announced was they were going to try to force the Sterlings to sell their interests based on Donald Sterling's, and keep in mind, he only owned half of the Clippers, based on Donald Sterling's private statements, his pillow talk with his mistress. So understand, no precedent has been set since the NBA wisely has figured out that they can't even vote on this. No precedent has been set that any owner can be divested of their interest in the team based on private pillow talk by their spouse, right? In many ways, Shelly Sterling is a victim here. Hubby decides to have an affair. Then Hubby compounds the problem by running off at the mouth in a non-PC manner <laughs> during the affair, neither of which should divest Shelly Sterling of her interest in the team. Let's go one step further. Now we have the spectacle of a $2 billion offer, all cash, being made by Steve Ballmer. Understand the league is almost certain to accept that offer. Why? Because of course everyone in the league just made a boatload of money. Let's say that you're the owner of the Bulls. You're the owner of the New York Knicks. You're the owner of the Boston Celtics, right? These are all teams with big time histories in the league, right? If the Clippers are going for $2 billion. Now you can tell your lenders that the value of your team has just jumped by nine figures. Right? Understand whether or not somebody else is willing to buy your team for $2 billion. Well, now you have the argument when you're trying to get financing for whatever reason. Right to make a bid on an athlete, to expand the stadium, to enhance your marketing campaign, whatever the reason. Now banks are going to listen to you. Now banks who want to make the loan, right, because they know they're making the loan to a multimillionaire group. Right, the banks want to make the loan, they need political cover. They've just gotten that cover courtesy of Steve Ballmer's valuation of the Los Angeles Clippers. So now when this $2 billion offer comes before the league, they're going to rubber stamp it. Let me also point out the obvious. Steve Ballmer was a reputable businessman. He is a reputable businessman, right? He's not involved in, let's say, something provocative that might alienate advertisers. Right? He didn't make his money, let's say, making adult movies. Right? He's not viewed as someone who is a scandalous international financier. Right? Rather, this is a guy who was with Microsoft, a high tech guy whose image is a vanilla image. That's exactly the image you want in a business like the NBA where you're trying to appeal to corporations who don't want to associate themselves with any kind of scandal, right? Let's go one step further. You may have heard that Donald Sterling is suing the league for a billion dollars. How Donald Sterling can claim to have suffered damages when the league is literally allowing him to sell his team at more than twice the price for which it was appraised by Forbes is beyond me. But understand this lawsuit is really a PR ploy as a great website, Deadspin, that's a website you need to look at, as a great website has pointed out, Shelley Sterling has already as part of the deal by which she is considering Steve Ballmer's two billion dollar offer, Shelley Sterling has already promised to indemnify the league for any monies that the league has to pay out to Donald Sterling. So this billion dollar lawsuit by Donald Sterling is really a 
PR ploy, isn't it? Because, of course, whatever happens in that lawsuit, the person who's going to be paying it will be his wife. Right? Think about it. An argument can be made that she would be paying Sterling in money that Sterling already owns half of. Right? So don't be too distracted by this use of the judicial system for political purposes. Right? Donald Sterling's lawsuit against the League is not something the League really has to worry about as long as the League has strong indemnification language in whatever agreement they have with Shelley Sterling. So to sum up, right, the NBA commissioner came out, had to placate, had to find a way to satisfy the players union, right? So the commissioner comes out and says, look, we want the maximum penalty against Donald Sterling. We're going to force him to sell his team, right? We're going to do our best to see if we can force him to sell his team. But keep in mind, that would require a vote of the Board of Governors and other people in the league. That vote never happened. Never happened. Right? Did not happen. The league never formally ordered Donald Sterling to sell his team. Right? The players' union was happy because, of course, publicly it showed their power. Right? I'm guessing that a lot of players didn't want to play four races. As I've said here numerous times, I certainly wasn't planning on watching another Clipper game. Certainly I wasn't going to go to a Clipper game. Right? That, you know, I knew that as long as Donald Sterling owned the team. But that's different than me supporting the right of the NBA to take away Donald Sterling's private property. Right? Let's go further. Steve Ballmer's $2 billion offer, of course the league is going to accept it. Because Ballmer has literally just put money in the pockets of every team owner whose team was valued at old valuations, right? The owner of the Golden State Warriors right now can say, hey, I'm in California too. You're going to put a $2 billion price tag on the Clippers? What's my team worth? We're moving into a new arena, <laughs> right? We're going to have certain things going on that the Clippers don't have going on, right? And we're in the Bay Area, the home of the new economy, right? Google, YouTube, right? eBay, Apple. You think that owner is going to vote against this sale at this price? A cash sale that's almost certain to go through? By the way, Ballmer doesn't have any partners, according to reports, for his offer. So, of course, as they investigate everyone's background, they don't even have an ownership group that they have to investigate. They can just look at Ballmer's background. Right? So this Clipper story is provocative. You know, I believe the best regulation is market based. Right? If you want to punish Donald Sterling, the best way to do it would have been how advertisers were doing it after his comments. Several of them pulled their ad campaigns from the Clippers, hit him in the pocketbook. But let's be careful. Let's not give any league the ability, unless there's some contract that specifically lays it out, right? I believe in the right to contract. Unless Donald Sterling has expressly agreed to allow the league to divest him of his ownership interests based on things like private comments to a mistress. Unless there's some concrete, explicit contract in place, let's not allow any league to pull any owner's ownership interests over private comments. I don't care how bad they are. 
right? If these private comments become public and if they're in fact racist comments, sexist comments, homophobic comments, then I believe that owner will pay the price because we the public won't have it. Right? You heard people like LeBron James say he wasn't going to, you know, play until Donald Sterling was gone. Right? There is blowback. I just don't want the precedent of some league being able to say, hey, we didn't like what we believe you may have said in private. We're pulling your team. Anyway, let me hear from you. I think the story is a fascinating one. Just understand that as of this video the NBA has not established the precedent that it can pull an owner's ownership interest in a team based on private comments to a mistress right that precedent hasn't been set the NBA has not voted on setting that precedent right the Constitution its constitution, quite frankly, in my opinion, doesn't give it the power. But I understand some people will interpret constitutions broadly. Just understand that it's unclear whether a broad interpretation of the league constitution is supported by the league's owners. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me be clear. I don't support racism. I wouldn't want to work for a racist, right? Donald Sterling's comments were deplorable. They're terrible. I don't think he's a good person. Right? I don't. But at the same time, if he bought and paid for his team, and if he hasn't delegated to the league the authority to divest him of ownership based on racist beliefs or racist comments said in private to his mistress, then I don't know how the league could have that power. I don't believe personally, given Mark Cuban's comments, that there's a consensus among league owners that the league has that power, right? That continues to be undecided, right? This transfer of ownership to Steve Ballmer is taking place without resolution of the issue on whether the league has the power to order an owner to divest his or her ownership interest based on private comments. That's how I see it. Let me hear how you see it. Leave your comments for me here online in the comment section to this video and let's have a public dialogue. Thanks for stopping by.